how to wind a shuttle. Now shuttles come either post shuttle, has a little post down here. Most of your post shuttles have a little hole. I don't know if you can see that or not, right there. Okay, then you have bobbin shuttles. You have some that come out by boy that are like this. Okay, and they have metal bobbins like that. Now, for the boy shuttles, the bobbin fits right on the end. Okay, and I'm going to show you what that what I'm going to do with that after we get into the Airlight Pony type shuttles. That's these. They are also a bobbin shuttle. These wind the same way as the boys. Okay, if I can get the bobbin out, it's not cooperating. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. The bobbin will fit right here on the end. Okay, gives you a little bit of a grip to hold on to that. So when you're winding it, you can keep control of your thread. Okay, and I'm going to show you how to wind these three shuttles. Okay, now if you happen to have a wooden shuttle, remember this because if you don't, you can break them. You want to, what they call, walk the thread on to the shuttle. I'm going to demonstrate that and show you exactly what that means. There are various ways that you can wind a post shuttle, okay? The key is you don't want to put a lot of twist in your thread unnecessarily. It will cause you problems down the road. Okay, so let's get on with the post shuttle first. Get some thread off this ball. I'm using a size 10 Aunt Lydia's crochet cotton. When we start tatting, I will be using actual tatting thread so you can see what it looks like as you're tatting. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to run that thread through that little hole. Okay, now for some tatters, this can be a difficult task. Once it comes out the other side, you just want to hold it. But I'm going to show you a little trick to the trade. Okay, make life simple on yourself. If you take a crochet hook, run it down through that, catch it from the other side. Okay, hold that thread and pull it through. That's the easy, easy, easy way of getting your thread through. Uh, people that have um, problems with sight and so forth, this is an easy way to get the thread pulled through that little T90 hole. Now I have some Tatsy shuttles that are a lot bigger and they are easier to wind. Let me get my, my Tatsy's out. And I want to show you how big these are. Now this is wound up with a crochet cotton size 3. Look how huge that thread is. That's what the other videos that are on the channel, on my channel, have in them is the Tatsy shuttle, okay, and the size 3. But the hole down inside is huge, okay. I mean, you could feel it and you can run your finger down inside this shuttle. The difference, this is a uh, starlight you see the difference in the size of shuttle? Okay, I used uh, these in the other videos for the Beginner's Tattings video series and I did that for the bigger thread to teach online because using small tatting thread you can't really see the stitches and so forth so I used the Tatsies. If you're interested in getting yourself a set of Tatsies these hold a really huge amount of thread. If you're doing a big project that's going to take a lot of thread, I advise getting a Tatsy. Okay, they're really good shuttles and they're put out by Handy Hands. The link will be uh, at the bottom of the video if you're interested in a Tatsy. Okay, so for now we're going to use the Starlight Shuttle and a size 10 crochet cotton from Aunt Lydia's and we're going to thread right through this hole, grabbing our crochet hook, 
and we're going to grab that thread, lay it across that hook of the crochet hook and pull it through. Simple, easy peasy. Now what I like to do, and some shuttles, uh, some tatters don't, I hold my thread right across the top of the shuttle to get my thread started. Okay, and what you want to do is you want to walk the thread onto the shuttle. Now this takes some time to do, okay? I'm not going to lie to you, this is the most time consuming part of tatting. After you've covered up this dangly piece of thread, you can just let it go and it'll work its way back into here, okay? The other way to wind the shuttle is, let me get my fingers in position here, hold the thread and do the windmill method, okay? Now as you're doing this, you are putting twist in the thread, okay? And as you're tatting, that will become a problem, okay? The best way, most shuttles have a pick on them that you get. Let me get one that has a pick and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Here's a shuttle that has a pick on it, okay? Some tatters want the pick to face to the back, okay? Some want the pick to face to the front. It really doesn't matter which direction that the pick faces, okay? It's your preference. The key is you want your exiting thread to come out if you're right-handed, I am right-handed. You want the thread to come out the lower bottom, okay? If you turn your shuttle this way and the pick's back here, then your thread will come out here. If you are left-handed and you've got your shuttle and you want to use it this way, you want your thread to come out on this side, okay? If you are right hand or left-handed, and you're using the pick this way, you want it to come out here, okay? And you'll have to watch when you're winding which way. And the best way to tell, okay, when you're putting your thread on, point your pick in the direction you want it to go, okay? Now, this one here used to have a pick on it. The Starlights come with a great big, huge, thick, pick and I neutered all mine. It got in my way. Okay. Now, if I was going to tat with the pick on and keep that to the back of my hand, my thread's coming out the right direction. However, if I wanted it to lay on top, it would have to come out this side. Okay. So make sure your thread comes out to the right of your shuttle at the bottom. So watch what you're doing. There are two ways to wind a post shuttle. The windmill method, which is around and around like a windmill, or the walk method, where you're walking it on. Okay? This keeps the twist out if you walk it on. If you're using wooden shuttles, walk your thread on. It does not put pressure on these blades here. Okay? When you're doing the windmill method, when you pull, see what I'm doing here? You're pulling the, away from you. Okay? And that does put pressure on the blades. These are blades. Okay? That's what they're called. Blades. Alright? The center part, the post part, is called the post. Alright, now let me get this thread off. And that's the easy way to take thread off a shuttle. Just grab it, walk it back off. And as you progress in tatting, you'll find that you can flat do this pretty fast. 
but most tatters have 15,000 shuttles available. So, that's just the thing. <laughs> okay, now, for a bobbin shuttle. Okay, if you will look, we've got a little T90 pinhole right here. Okay, now I don't know that this 10, size 10 thread is going to go through that pinhole, but we're going to give it a whirl. Best way, like I said, grab that crochet hook, pull that thread through. Got it through the pinhole. Now, we're going to put this on that shuttle like that. Pull out some of that slack. Okay. Lay that thread on top of that shuttle. Just like that. Okay. And start winding. Try to get your thread on that bobbin as even as you possibly can. Okay. Because if you don't, with these type of shuttles, as you're tatting, this thread could slip off and get between the top of the bobbin and the top of the blade of the shuttle or the bottom blade of the shuttle. And it'll hang and it can destroy some tatting thread. Okay? I won't lie to you. It can destroy it. Then when you're done winding your bobbin, pull it off. That's another chore to do. Okay? And you want to drop it in. Like I said, if you're going to use it with the crochet hook facing outward, you want the hook to face the same direction as your thread so it doesn't hang as you're tatting. Okay? Then you're going to put that bobbin, after you snip off this little extra up here, you're going to slide that bobbin right in till you hear it click. And your thread is coming out the back of the shuttle. Okay. Now, if you want to use it with the crochet hook facing backwards, same deal. We're going to use it this way. We want the hook facing that way, away from us. All right. The thread will come out the back here. All right. So you want to turn your little bobbin. Make sure it comes out the back here. Don't look at that little taggy. That would be gone. Okay? You want it to come out the back. Then you're ready to tat. It's out of your way. Okay? So, that's the little air light ponies. The ones that look like this. Okay? Now, when you're working with the boy metal shuttles, guess what? Same principle. Get that thread off. We have the boy. These are the most common ones that you see in the craft stores, the metal ones. They got a little hook up here, and that little puppy can grab some thread and do some damage if you ain't careful. A lot of people that have boy crochet um, tatting shuttles, they'll turn them like this when they're tatting and use them that way with the hook facing backwards. That way they have more control, okay? Another thing with the boy, it's got these little uh, pieces of metal where the two blades meet up here folded over. Those can hang on tatting thread. So one of the little hints that I'm going to give you is take a piece of masking tape or something and cover it. Because if it hangs on your tatting thread and you're not paying attention, you can do some serious damage to your tatting. Okay? So, same deal. You're going to run the crochet hook through there. Get your thread. Lay it across that crochet hook. Hold it back. And pull it through the little hole. Okay, simple, easy peasy. After you get it through the hook or through the hole, you throw your shuttle in the hole and then you start winding it just like you did the air light. It follows the same principle as the air light and ponies. Uh, there's no difference. The difference is this is metal and those are plastic. 
I will say this about metal. Over time, acids in your skin will tarnish this metal. You'll get wear and tear down in here that all of that can damage your thread. The best way to prevent the tarnishing from rubbing off this silver coating up here, um, I have found is get you some machine oil, rub it down every time you use this. When you put it in for the night, rub it down with that machine oil. Take your thread out. Rub it down with the machine oil. Wipe it down and let it dry overnight. What happens is, is our hands have oils. Well, within those oils, we also have acids. The acids is what wears this metal off. Okay? That's why uh, costume jewelry, your rings will change color. Because the acids in the oils on your skin wears this metal coating off. Okay? So just a little tidbit of information on metal shuttles. They will also leave a metal, I don't know, a coating on your hands, but you can smell metal on your hands when you've used a metal shuttle. Uh, I don't use metal shuttles. I have them, but I don't use them. Um, they're just decorative, basically, and pretty shuttles. So I don't use them. I stick with plastic. Uh, especially if I'm going to be traveling, I use a lot of plastic shuttles. Wood is my favorite. If you've got arthritis, I advise getting wooden shuttles because your hands don't cramp. You don't have the arthur problems with a wooden shuttle that you do with the plastic. Um, anytime you can get natural substances to use in craft work, it saves on arthur. I don't know why. It's just something that happens. I guess nature works with us. So, on that note, that's how you wind a shuttle. Okay? So, the next class, we are going to dig in to the double stitch and the dreaded flip. Everybody has difficulties with it because they look at it so complicated. But I'm going to bring it down to simplified terms. So, until next time, happy tatting and have a great day. And thank you.